Wilson have racked up the most major wins in the iron category. So why are we still overlooking all these great models? I've got four of the current lineup to test out, look at the differences and see if you should be gaming them. And if these are just the most underrated irons in golf. So I've got Wilson's four irons for 2024 here. The Dyna Power stays in the line. We saw this last year, it came out in kind of conjunction with the Woods release, and this was a really strong product. Off the back of that, they brought out the brand new Dyna Power Forge, which has a really similar tech store. You can see some of the like tech here on the sole. It kind of feeds through, but this is a forged offering. So it's a little bit more of a player offering, not quite as forgiving, but gonna maybe fit that market of people who want a little bit more forgiveness, a little bit more distance, but don't necessarily want a full cast club. Now, then we drop into the serious like jaw droppingly good looking clubs. Look at these, blades and CBs. Not probably <laughs> the most forgiving but they're gonna feel great and they just look so good, don't they? Right, we're gonna see what the difference is between these four. I've optimistically pulled six iron out <laughs> in all the models. I've got 150 yards uphill into the wind. I'm thinking like, is the blade gonna get all the way back there? Am I gonna fly it over the back with the Dyna Power? It's gonna be really interesting to see the differences in like distance, height, trajectory. I also feel, because we've obviously got a vast difference in terms of that full blade up to the cast Dyna Power. So we're on the 14th here at Old Woodley, and since we've got four models, we're gonna do a little nearest the pin. I've got some different balls marked up for each club, so there can't be any cheating there. I've got one blank, one picks, blue dots and pink dots. We'll see, will the blade surprise me and end up nearer than the other clubs? Depends if it gets to the green or not. Right, first up we've got the Dyna Power. This is the only cast offering out of the four we've got here. The big technology points are variable face thickness. This was actually one of the first models that Wilson used AI in to develop this. So they used loads of iterations, lots of data collected to kind of work out where the face needed to be different thicknesses. This is combined with the power holes that we see on the bottom and more heel toe weighting, which drives up that MOI, gives us more forgiveness. So what we should see is high ball flight here and a lot of distance. Oh, when I tested these last year, the 7-iron went like 170 yards or something stupid. So see how this works here today. It is freezing cold and not the middle of summer, so that's going to play into this. Now, you can definitely tell these are more of that into that player's distance game improvement area when you put it down over the ball. They're a little bit bigger. You can kind of see the back of the club behind the ball, but actually I like the fact there's not too much offset. Sometimes in this kind of category, you can get massive there, which is not a personal preference. Oh, I hit that so thin, but I think it's actually still going to reach, which doesn't bode well for if I strike it. <laughs> Definitely full marks for forgiveness there because that was a horrendous strike and I've still got like a 30 foot of a birdie. I'm not sure I'd be saying that after hitting that kind of shot with a blade. What's better? That's not bad, you know. About 12 foot. It's definitely set a marker. Now, what I like about these compared to some kind of game improvement more players distance clubs is they're actually pretty neutral down the target line. They do have a kind of a little bit of draw bias, but it's definitely not as excessive as some of the models. So if you're someone who fits in that category who wants a bit more height, wants a bit more distance, wants some more forgiveness, but you don't necessarily need to draw the ball more, this is a good option. I think it just opens these up to a like bit more of the market. Oh, that was such a nice high ball flight. <laughs> I mean, I was literally hitting that like three quarter because I knew it would be long otherwise. And that still got to the back of the green. I'm serious distance with these. So on some of my clubs, these carry 15 yards further than the irons I game, which is a bit mental. So you have to more distance. These definitely fit the bill. You can kind of see the size differences here between these two models. They share loads of technology in terms of like the power hole technology on the bottom, the variable face thickness, but this is just a little bit small and it's more forged. So you're gonna hopefully <laughs> get a slightly better feel and probably lose a little bit of distance, I would guess. Let's go blue dots for this one. Now the size of this is a lot better. I really like this. There's seriously a very minimal offset, which is probably not I would have expected um, for this size of iron. The top line is probably a little bit thicker than some of the models like this, but I actually think it's a really nice compact shape. It's very shiny. Oh, the feel is so different. 
you can definitely feel there's an element of Ford in here. Oh, I thought that was straight at it, but it's just spun up short. I need to give it a bit more of a hit. Oh, I've blocked that so much. <laughs> I can't get over how nice these feel though. I still feel like the size of the club head and the tech that is in there, they definitely feel a lot softer than I expected. And there's a noticeable jump between the two models. This is really tense because I don't know if this shot needs to go closer to be nearest because I, I just, I can't get the depth perception of if that first shot that's real online is nearer than the other one to the right. Also, why am I trying to play against myself for nearest the pin? This is so confusing. I literally win, no matter how this goes. Oh, that's nice. Go in. Oh, I thought that was in, but it was long. That was nice though. Sounds really good and impressed with the level of forgiveness, to be honest. And the distance that got up there, that's nearly carried as far as the Dyna Power. It does kind of make you wonder like, what is the difference between the two models there? Cause that's nearly getting up as far, but I'm massively gaining on feel. Interesting. I do think the other one probably is a little bit more forgiving on like the toe strikes, just cause there's a little bit more like extreme weighting. And I am partial to a few toe strikes sometimes. Okay, we're halfway through iron testing. And while I've got your attention for a minute, if you're not subscribed, it'll make a huge difference. You could hit that subscribe button. It really helps boost our content and helps more people see it. And just means we can shoot more exciting stuff in the future. Right, let's go back to those blades. Okay, CBs. I just love the look of these. This is where you get to the stage where you're like, oh, I really wish I could game these. And then you get to like the five and the four iron, you get a little bit nervous. <laughs> now, as with the kind of two Dynapower irons, the tech kind of matches up with the CB and the blade to be quite consistent. And a big thing they've done is remove quite a lot of weight from the bottom of the hosel to try and have a more flowing feel, but to also help the CG. So if you imagine a golf club, you think the middle is the middle, but actually in terms of center of gravity, the center of the club, and the center of the gravity aren't always in the same place. And that's because we've got this massive hosel with loads of weight up here. So taking more weight out of here brings the center and the center of gravity to match more, which just gives a more neutral ball flight and kind of takes away that bit of draw bias that maybe you might want in a more thicker game improvement club, but like a tour pro doesn't necessarily always want that. They like a neutral ball flight and like to be able to add their own shape to the shot. And we see more and more top players now who don't want to hit a draw. They want to hit a fade. So Wilson have brought that in in both the CB and the blade. Sure, you know, although this looks really compact from like behind, there is still a little bit of thickness to the top line. I don't think it's actually too intimidating over the ball. Oh, it's so soft though. I've hit that so far left though. Do you know what I find really weird when I test different models is that you don't necessarily always hit the ones furthest that you should. Like sometimes, if you feel more comfortable with something that's smaller and suits your eye, you actually end up hitting it just as far, which is what I've seemed to have happened here, although I did pull that like 40 feet left, so that could also have something to do with it. <laughs> right, come on, I can't. My CB can't be the furthest one away from the pin. That literally makes no sense. It's literally all about control and feel. Maybe it's because it's less forgiving. Showing off my uh, lack of direction control. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Definitely doesn't quite fly as far if you don't strike it perfectly. That's made the green, but it's hiding behind the bank of the bunker. I really wish the wind hadn't just decided to strike up a little bit more. You need to actually put a good shot in with this. Oh, go. It's so good for line, but I think it's short. That's close, I can't tell. Let's see what the blade has to say about this. I feel like this is a club that just everyone wishes it could use. Like, just look how good that looks. That's gotta be up there with like one of the best looking blades. Oh, it's just a nice little player's cut. <laughs> that could be the one. What's going on? I thought I was going to be terrible with the blade. My misconceptions are all over the place. You can definitely see how they've got more cutty as we've gone along. You can definitely see the difference in like CG and weighting. Oh, it just feels so nice. I can't get over how soft that is. 
No, it's, it's traveling too. Definitely flies a little bit lower, especially on the not perfect strikes. I actually can't get over how like consistent and good that's been. It's like 150 carry with six 200 spin. That'll do. All right, last ball to hurl it out with. <laughs> Optimistic thinking. It has a chance actually. The blade's just actually done it on everyone else. <laughs> Maybe I've got some new irons to go in the back. Let's go look at the results. So if we take my one like really dodgy pull out of here, that dispersion's impressive. I mean, the blade's got the two closest shots. Never mind, just the closest. This one's literally three feet, six feet, and one that somehow hit all the way to the back of the green. <laughs> Initially, I was worried about actually being able to get that club up to the pin and I've nearly knocked one over the back. It just goes to show you, you can have all different technologies, like different size of clubs. Don't have like a misconception or a thought before you go to your fitting about what you have to use. I think it really shows you should try all different models and see what suits you. You could definitely see a difference through the range in terms of height of shot and shot shape through like that CG and different weighting. But in terms of actual distance, it was interesting how I kind of adapted to that. I would say <laughs> there was more forgiveness in some of the other models. I definitely hit worse strikes with some of the diner powers, but then it kind of goes to show you actually going down to a smaller club sometimes makes you concentrate <laughs> a little bit more and actually hit better shots. They're right there. Now, I think you'll have seen <laughs> across the board there, the performance was really good. It's quite interesting because coming into this, I've maybe had like this idea that these two are going to be quite similar and these two are going to be quite similar and there might be quite a big gap in the middle but actually they kind of gapped up the clubs really well in terms of the difference in like distance and forgiveness. I would say kind of the biggest jump here is actually from the Dyna Power to the Dyna Power Forged in terms of that difference in feel from that cast to forged product. But if you're someone who mishits it a lot and wants extra forgiveness on the off center strikes, I still think this is the best model. Now, which one suited me the best is kind of like blown my mind because I definitely would not have said the blade at the start of this, but it was clear it was the most consistent. I was hitting it nearest the pin. And I was like controlling the shots best with that. And I think if you can, I think if you were to end up in a position where there's a blade club that you hit really well and are comfortable with, it's like a no brainer because the spin's so good, you're gonna control it. And it feels super good too. And I mean, you just look like a player with this in your golf bag. <laughs> now, another big point loads of people might miss when it comes to Wilson is these Dyna Power models are like, 300 pounds cheaper than most other offerings similar to this across the market which is a serious amount of money when you're considering how good the performance was now the cbs and the blades are a little bit more expensive they're pushing into their like 1000 mark compared to seven to eight hundred in these depending on shafts but they're still cheaper than other options by like 100 pounds so not only is the performance really there but also so is the price point i think it just goes back to that original point like one, these are super underrated, but two, they're not just underrated, they're really high performance. Now, I've started my Pick My Stick series, and after hitting these, I'm seriously thinking we need to do some testing with these, because these irons could be gamers. I guess you'll have to come back and find out about that when that video goes live.